well my dear students this is our 23rd lecture in the series of mechanics of metal forming and uh, if you recall the previous lecture number 22 where we started with the the examples uh, uh, to explain uh, the problems, various problems that we could learn the, the mechanics and the, the aspects of slip line theory, where we construct slip line. And if you recall the Henke's first uh, equation and uh, Henke's equations, and then Geringer's equations, and then the construction of uh, Mm, slip line either the numerical method or graphical method and then uh, uh, the two examples we took for the frictionless cases where uh, so let us continue further with more examples so that it uh, for the um, uh, difficult problems how the slip line theory is being applied. So, uh, let us uh, see the third case where the indentation of a slip uh, line is uh, theory is used for indentation of a semi infinite mass by a frictionless wedge shape punch. So, uh, look at this figure number 21A basically. So, uh, let us consider the indentation of a semi infinite mass by a smooth wedge shaped punch of say the angle the semi angle have alpha where um, and as the wedge penetrates into the material uh, the piling up occurs on either side of the punch. So, that geometric similarity is maintained. It is assumed therefore, that uh, the slip line field does not change uh, in shape with uh, increasing penetration of the wedge, but merely its uh, size increases. So, uh, let us see the figure number 21A, where a slip line field for the uh, depth of penetration D is shown. And if you look at uh, A, B, C, D, E, which is the deformation zone. Since the field is symmetrical, only one half of the system is being taken, it is being considered for illustrating the things. So, for a frictionless punch, as you are aware, the slip lines that is A, C and B, C must meet the punch surface at 45. That's true as whatever we learn from the four types of surfaces that we come across in slip line. So, the point A is in, in uh, is in, uh, uh, in den, uh, uh, identified from the cons, uh, consideration that piled up material A E F is equal to the volume of the material that is uh, B F G displayed from the punch. So, A e is now the, the free surface and the slip line A D and D E must meet at 45 degree therefore, because it is a free surface. The slip line field therefore, consists of two isosceles triangle that is triangle A B C and triangle A D E with 
ACD as a uh, centered fan of angle theta. The hodograph for the, the propose this particular proposed field which is shown here in figure 21 uh, B, uh, look at this as the punch is punched down with unit velocity as I told you in all the cases we are going to start with unit velocity penetration. So, the material in block B and uh, there is material movement block wise if you recall the example 1 or example 2, we located different blocks number 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. So, here in this figure uh, the material in block 2 shear parallel to AB and BC. The block C and block F uh, number 4 they shear along AC you can look here and uh, uh, you see that this is what is the depth D up to B and this is what is the free surface and this is what is the, the wedge shape punch. So, you can propose another kind of slightly different starting slip line. So, as you know the, but this slip line initially that you if you recall uh, that you propose is to be kinematically admissible and that you have to apply the condition and satisfy and then only you can go ahead for drawing the velocity field that is hodograph. So, if you look here, so uh, if you uh, see that they shear that that is the block 2 which is uh, is shearing parallel to A B and B C and similarly in block uh, 3 and 4 they shear along A C and C D and A D and D E respectively. You can look here in the figure. The velocity of block 4 is therefore parallel to D E which is uh, in con conformity with the deformation pattern and the field proposed in uh, and therefore, the proposed field is uh, kinematically admissible that is true. Now, that is the, the second step. The slip lines are identified from the consideration of stresses at the free surface as you know and here it is at E where sigma 2 is 0 and the other principal stress is compressive you can look here. Therefore, D E is an alpha line that is true because sigma 2 is 0 at E the pressure P E if you see small p e at E is equal to k which is the shear stress of the material. Uh, you can use the Mohr circle diagram. So, from Mohr circle diagram the pressure at E is equal to which is P E at E which is equal to K and that is from the Mohr circle you can look here. Since line D E is straight therefore, what we can expect that is P D is equal to P E and that is equal to K and from D to C if you go. So, the alpha line rotates clockwise through an angle theta and therefore, we can apply the Henke's equation and if you apply the Henke's equation we can get that P C plus twice K minus theta it, it will be equal to P D and that is equal to K or we can further write that P C if you simplify this. So, P C becomes K 1 plus twice theta. Slip lines A C and B C are straight you, you can see and therefore, P A and P B that is the pressure on point A and point B is equal to uh, pressure on C that is P C and that is all equal to K 1 plus twice theta. The principal stress which is normal to A B is same as the normal pressure Q on A B and can therefore, be obtained as Q which is the pressure which is equal to K plus K 1 plus 2 theta 
and that is nothing but twice k 1 plus theta. And uh, using the Mohr circle diagram again, the load per unit width that is capital P to cause penetration of the punch can now be evaluated. So, it can be evaluated like that is capital P that is the load per unit width can be calculated which is equal to twice Q A B and sin alpha or simply we can say now in the normalized form that P by 2 K and that is equal to 2 1 plus theta A B sin alpha. And uh, it is a function of alpha therefore, you can see in the equation and it is also function of the depth of the penetration uh, D. The variation of uh, P by 2 K with the semi angle alpha can be drawn. So, if we take the different angles of alpha and uh, if one can plot the P by 2 theta or P by 2 K and on the x axis alpha can be taken. So, one can see this variation has been shown here in uh, figure number 22, you can see here. So, we take the alpha value say uh, 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree and 120 degree and then the corresponding P by 2 K value is obtained as 1.5 and uh, then it is somehow 1.9 and then around 9 it is around 2.6 something like 7 something like that and that is how this variation one can see here that is start from 0. So, this is what a, a P by 2 K now it can be used for uh, that is the load and one can uh, it can be used directly for um, selecting uh, motors power and all that. So, that is the simple use of slip line theory. Second, let us take another example where the plane strain compression with a perfectly rough platens uh, a set of two platen uh, upper and lower are done. Let us take this here and uh, uh, the previous uh, figure if you see 22, you should mark the uh, figure number uh, 21, sorry 21, you should mark B the from where the, where the different zones like 1, 2, 3, 4 are marked from one half the section and the, then the photograph is drawn. So, you can same way we explained last time the construction of photogram, we continue here also. So, let us take come back to the problem uh, where we have a plain strain compression with perfectly rough platen and uh, look at this figure uh, number 23. The slip line field for uh, compression between two rough platens are chosen here. The slip lines are uh, started from the interface therefore, where they meet uh, the platens at 0 degree and 90 degree. They must also meet the axis of the symmetry at 45, since uh, there can be no shear uh, stress on the plane. So, uh, plane of symmetry. So, uh, these two conditions are fulfilled by drawing circular arcs, if you recall here. So, you can look at the figure, see here. Uh, this is what is the height of 2 h is taken and uh, half of the that is the and the total width is taken as 2 b. So, one half is considered. So, height is 2 h and uh, this is b. So, if you come back, uh, so these conditions are fulfilled by drawing the circular arcs and we can continue drawing the arcs from uh, point A and B with A C as the radius, one can go on doing. And uh, A C is the uh, line which is passing through A and uh, inter, uh, intersect the axis of symmetry at 45 degree at C. The slip line can now be extended and uh, you, if you see into figure 23, 
using the chart method which is described already. Uh, so, if you look at the figure number 23a, all charts are known and these can be smoothened subsequently to get the uh, slip line field, complete slip line field. In this proposed slip line field, the, the circular fan uh, centered slip line that is the uh, CC3 has been divided into uh, uh, segments uh, of uh, uh, theta which is equal to 15 degree and uh, for better accuracy similar segments of say 5 degree may also be taken, but it will take more number of uh, zones no problem. But uh, if B by H is taken as uh, say 3.6, the two axis of symmetry will intersect at uh, point F uh, making it uh, the center point and slip line field for various values of B by H can also be drawn by taking appropriate values of theta therefore. And uh, so, now the second is to see that the admissibility of the proposed slip line field is verified by constructing the hodograph. So, if you look at figure number 23b here, so a hodograph from this proposed slip line is being drawn. Since the field is symmetrical, only one quarter of the field is enough uh, for consideration. So, if you look at uh, in the proposed field that is A C 3 D 2 E 1 F is a rigid zone and moves with the platen with one velocity. Okay. As the upper platen is moved downward uh, with unit velocity the rigid, don't, uh, the rigid zone moves with it and this is represented by what is being represented here in figure as O 1 on the hodograph. When particles from block 1 crosses the uh, discontinuity that is E 1 f, they are sheared along E 1 f. The, the absolute velocity of block 2 however, must be horizontal uh, along uh, E f uh, because of symmetry. These identify uh, point 2 on the hodograph. Therefore, when particles from block 1 crosses E 1 D 1 uh, E 1 D 2 and enter in the block 3 that is the next block, they are sheared along E 1 D 2 and E E 1. Since no change in the tangential velocity discontinuity is possible along a slip line. So, uh, 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 one can see that uh, uh, here if you look at again the figure uh, uh, the different regions if you look at and if we identify the region accordingly if we see here. So, uh, this is what is it will be uh, since the, the change in the tangential velocity discontinuity is possible along a slip line therefore, uh, 12 and 13 must be equal that is what is there. And similarly, points 4 and 5 are identical by moving along the slip line that is F E 1 D 2 C 3 A. When particles from block 3 that is uh, it enters from block 3 to block 6 they are sheared along D 1 E, but the symmetric condition provides absolute velocity along D E. These two direction identify point 5. When particle moves from block 4 to 7, directions C 2 E D 1 and D D 1 are used for locating point C. Uh, point 7 in fact, in the figure uh, re related hodograph which is uh, located as uh, point uh, 7. 
So, likewise we proceed and uh, proceeding in this manner from one block to the another block and from the next block uh, the hodograph is completed and uh, until we reach uh, the position 11 uh, we continue the process. So, uh, for the slip line field to be compatible the absolute velocity of block 11 must be horizontal and it should be outward and of magnitude which is equal to b by h and that is that we started to be 3.6. So, the b by h value must be equal to 3.6 uh, in this particular case. Uh, since this is the case, the proposed field is once it is because it is being satisfied. So, this particular proposed field is kinematically admissible. Once it is admissible, then we can go ahead and the next step is to identify the, the alpha and beta lines and this is done from the consideration of principal stresses at point C in the rigid block 11. So, here if you see the horizontal principal stress which is sigma 1 is 0 and the vertical principal stress sigma 2 is compressive and therefore, sigma 1 is the algebraically greatest principal stress and A c becomes the alpha line therefore, that is the simple way. So, uh, the hydrostatic pressure if we say that the hydrostatic pressure uh, P c at point c is uh, uh, obtained one can obtain as k and because if you use the uh, the uh, the more circle diagram uh, previous figure so because sigma 1 is 0 here so between c and uh, uh, c3 the beta lines rotate through uh, plus uh, 45 degree and therefore one can find out the pressure on point C that is P C and minus 2 K multiplied by plus pi by 4 and that would be equal to P C and that is what is equal to K or we can further simplify as P C uh, 3 that is the pressure in the, the region point C and that is equal to K 1 plus pi by 2. So, the slip line that is A C 3 is straight therefore, uh, uh, the one can then find out the, the pressure which is equal to P C 3 and that is equal to K 1 plus pi by 2 and uh, it is clear that normal pressure P on the platen along uh, A C 3 is same as the hydrostatic pressure and thus we can write that P A C 3 is equal to k 1 plus pi by 2 or simply we can say that p a c 3 by 2 k and this is equal to 1 by 2 in bracket 1 plus pi by 2 and that is what is equal to 1.29. Similarly, between c 3 and d uh, 2 the alpha line is rotated through an angle pi by uh, almost uh, uh, through an angle minus pi by uh, 12 and therefore, we can say that P d 2 plus twice k minus pi by 12 is equal to P c 3 and it is equal to k 1 plus pi by 2 or simply we can say that it is P d 2 is equal to k 1 plus 2 by 3 pi and in a similar way one can have the P E 1 which is equal to k 1 plus 5 by 6 pi. And uh, if we see the figure number 24 here where the, the distribution of uh, this pressure is shown one can see. So, this is what is the point A C 3 D 2 E 1 and F. So, you see at the A the pressure is around 2.57 likewise whatever we calculated at C 3 it is 3.09 at D 2 it is 3.69 and 
and it is F is 4.19. So, from the end A to F the pressure goes on increasing and uh, therefore, one can write down that the P F similarly from the previous one is equal to K 1 plus pi. So, the normal pressure distribution along uh, A C 3 D 2 E 1 F it is uh, has been shown here in the pressure distribution curve. The total vertical force can be obtained from this by resolving the forces on the slip line in the vertical direction therefore, and referring to figure uh, next figure 25, uh, the total vertical force that is uh, delta F on the element uh, small element delta S can be calculated and therefore, it can be calculated as uh, small delta F uh, which is equal to k sin psi d s because it is on the small area of d s plus p cos psi d s. So, if you integrate uh, the total pressure can be obtained uh, that is the total pressure uh, F. So, one can integrate on C 3 F and therefore, the total pressure can be written as K integral sin psi d s and plus P cos psi d s and that is equal to K over the integral d y plus integral P uh, d x and that is equal to K h plus integral P C 3 plus 2 K psi and that is what is multiplied by d x and therefore, one can find out that is the total force F divided by 2 k equals h by 2 plus P c 3 by 2 k x plus integral psi d x. The mean uh, normal pressure that is uh, P c 3 bar F which is acting on C 3 F can now be evaluated from the uh, previous equation and so it can evaluated as P C 3 F divided by um, 2 k and that is equal to 2 summation over the summation psi delta x plus h divided by uh, 2 x and will be h is less 1 5 and x is taken as uh, 3.6 multiplied by therefore, x would be uh, 3.6 multiplied by 5 minus 2 by 5. So, that uh, the summation that is psi delta x can be calculated as the summation of these 3 terms over the different. So, like psi delta x e 2 over c x distance. So, this is the small element has been taken d s which was discussed earlier and uh, d s the components are d, uh, delta x and delta y and pressure is acting here. This is the shear stress acting and this is what is the angle psi of the interest and therefore, the mean pressure on the whole platen that is the p bar can now be easily calculated by evaluating this one that is p bar by 2 k can now be evaluated as uh, p bar a c 3 divided by 2 k multiplied by b minus x plus p bar c 3 f divided by 2 k x and that is divided whole division by it is divided by b and if from the previous example where we took the value of h as 2.5 and uh, 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 from uh, that is calculated as 2 4.42 uh, plus 2.5 and divided by 11.0 plus 1.29 uh, when it is all together calculated. So, that gives out uh, from the actual measurement that gives out 1.92 and uh, uh, this is what is uh, has been shown uh, and 
uh, once you calculate uh, here from the mean pressure and we calculate. So, this comes out to be 1.29 multiplied by 3.5 plus 1.92 multiplied by 5.5 divided by 9.0 and that is what is equal to 1.66. So, this is what is your uh, 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 first case of the problem and uh, there. So, uh, let us start with the second uh, problem, second example and uh, let us take uh, situation where the drawing of rectangular strip with uh, 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 with frictionless uh, taper die is taken and uh, the tapered in the sense when the uh, if you look at uh, this particular uh, uh, that is figure uh, 26 where a rectangular strip is taken and uh, uh, here uh, if you look at uh, the R which is your the value uh, which is now taken as uh, which is less than 2 sin alpha divided by 1 plus 2 sin alpha. So, this is what is the uh, tapered angle taken. So, let us uh, consider the drawing of a rectangular strip with a frictionless tapered die of a semi cone angle alpha uh, and uh, this what has been shown here in figure number uh, 26A if you look here. Here uh, only one half of the system is being shown since uh, it is quite symmetrical about the center line. So, one uh, half is enough. Uh, since the die is frictionless, the slip line field is uh, initiated at the die surface with slip line AC and uh, BC which is inclined to AB at uh, 45 uh, degree which is shown here. So, with A and B as center, one can now draw the fan centered field uh, uh, and therefore, uh, it is constructed and extended using short method again to meet the center line at F. So, choosing angle C A D and uh, C B C 1, uh, let us take it as 10 degree the slip line C D and uh, C C 1 are identified and it is extended to locate point D 1. So, next point that is uh, E 2 D 2 and uh, E 3 D 3 and F are uh, located in sequence likewise. So, uh, the proposed uh, slip line field has been uh, there in the figure uh, 26A and uh, uh, it is being constructed one can see by choosing 10 degree interval, but for the better result one can go lesser angle say for an example 5 degree and uh, of interval and uh, may be lesser also, but you know uh, making the small angle efforts are more. So, after the chart methods uh, and uh, charts are drawn here you see a smooth curve is drawn uh, through the intersection point to get the final field which is shown here in uh, 26 B. So, slip line if you see here the slip line uh, uh, F 3 E and uh, D 3 F uh, meet the axis of symmetry at 45 degree. So, that there is no resultant shear um, stress along the axis. This condition uh, fixes the extent of the two uh, fan centered field. Uh, you also please notice that this in figure A 26 A the velocity is taken as 
one uh, on the this side see this side it is height is h1 uh, uh, drawing because it is drawing so hb and on the other side right hand side it is ha and this is what is the ab the die portion and these are the points c c1 d1 d2 d3 and f is on the center line before drawing the velocity is taken as unit as 1 and after it becomes 1 by 1 minus r and uh, so these centered fan center drawing is there and uh, this is what is being shown as b the smooth slip line field all right so uh, this is what is uh, uh, the condition the axis the extent of the two uh, uh, fan centered field if we take that is the angles uh, phi 1 and phi 2 are fixed and the suitable uh, equal interval is chosen to complete the field and likewise it has been. Uh, once the this particular proposed slip line is filled the hodograph for the proposed field uh, is being drawn and it is it has been shown here in 26 c. So, now if you look at the figure c here uh, this is what is the angle uh, alpha that and these are the points a and b locating the different regions region 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12, 13, 14 all those things and then one can uh, uh, and if you see a particle uh, uh, moving with unit velocity in region 1 and when it enters the block 2 it is sheared which is parallel to uh, E3 f and D3 f uh, on crossing the velocity discontinuity B f uh, which is moving horizontally with a final velocity which is equal to 1 by 1 minus r. Thus uh, points 1, 2 and 3 can be identical therefore, it is quite obvious. The tangential velocity discontinuity along A f must remain same that is the velocity which is normal to the, uh, the slip line must remain unchanged and uh, similarly the normal velocity along slip line B f must remain unchanged. Therefore, the velocity of block that is 4, 5, 6 and 7 are known therefore. These points are obtained by drawing appropriate parallel lines. For example, if we take the 4, the point 4 is uh, identified by drawing 1, 4 and uh, 3, 4 uh, which is parallel to uh, E 2, E 3 and uh, E 3, D 2. 7 is identified by drawing 2, 7 and 3, 7 which is parallel to C 3, D 3 and d2 d3 and so on we can continue similarly a particle entering block 8 is sheared along to d1 d2 and uh, c2 d2 the same procedure is uh, followed for all other blocks like uh, block 8 block 9 and all that and the hodograph can be extended and constructed completely and uh, and this photograph it is a kind of mess by mess way construction we get. The intersection can uh, be later joined by smooth curve instead of a chart and uh, uh, if you look at uh, in this photograph the exit velocity uh, was used to be complete the diagram and the correct solution um, should indicate the velocity vector that is 
0 11 uh, 2 be uh, sorry O 11 to be parallel to the die face that will show that it is the things are ok, the construction is ok. Since this is the case, the proposed field is kinematically proposed because it is now coming as. So, the this proposed field is kinematically admissible and that is correct one. So, the slip line can be identified by considering the principal stresses at f now. The principal normal stress as uh, uh, at uh, f is uh, compressive while the principal uh, stress along the axis and is tensile on the exit side one can see. Therefore, algebraically greatest principal stress acts along the axis with which identifies a f and b f as alpha and beta lines respectively. To determine the drying stress the because that is the problem we have to find. So, to determine this particular drying stress which is required for pen, uh, drying initiate the drying in fact, the pressure at some point in the field must be known therefore, the pressure at f cannot be obtained directly since both entry and the exit slip lines are not straight. So, however, p f that is the point f the pressure on f can be obtained uh, in an indirect manner as like here. Uh, so, to get this value the procedure uh, can be uh, just similar to the situation earlier we did. So, uh, let g be an a, any point on the alpha line that is a f and, and let us use the uh, figure number 27 here, where the uh, rotation of slip line uh, psi dash is clockwise from the direction at point f. So, one can now use the Henke's equation and that gives p g plus 2 k minus psi dash and that is equal to p f or simply it is p g uh, is equal to p f plus twice k psi dash. So, uh, the resolved stresses on the element of length d s if you look are uh, indicated here in figure uh, uh, 27. So, one can see here that is this is what is the the surface d s length of the surface and d x horizontal component and d h is the vertical component and this is what the resolution uh, re, uh, resolution of the the uh, at point g is shown. So, this is what is the pressure g p g k and this is the angle psi dash one can see here in uh, and that is what is the stresses at point g on the surface d s is taken. So, the total force now can be calculated. So, the total force acting over the uh, boundary that is a e 1 e 2 e 3 f must be equal to the, the, the back tension that is the sigma x b r over the integral from 0 to uh, h b sigma x d h that is the, the back tension that is and uh, in uh, absence of back tension therefore, when the sigma x b is 0 when there is no back tension both the cases may occur. So, when the there is no back tension that is sigma x b is 0 the resolution of the stresses can be found out and it is found as uh, uh, over integral p g sin pi by 4 plus psi dash d s minus integral k cos pi by 4 plus psi dash d s and this is what is to be 0. And therefore, one can further write as integral p f plus twice k psi dash sin pi by 4 plus psi dash d s minus k 
cos phi by 4 plus psi dash ds and that is what is equal to 0. So, if you look at figure 27 again the pressure P f can therefore, be evaluated and the pressure at any point therefore, on A f any point on therefore, uh, on A f can be evaluated. So, if you go back again to the figure 26, so between E 1 uh, and C the beta line rotates anticlockwise through an angle phi 1 and therefore, P C is equal to P E 1 plus 2 K phi 1 and since A C and B C are straight slip lines and therefore, P A becomes equal to P B and that is equal to P C. The principal stress sigma 2 on the die phase is equal to the die pressure Q and it can be easily obtained using Bohr's, uh, Mohr's circle as you recall. So, it can be obtained that Q is equal to sigma 2 and that is equal to P A plus K and that is further equal to P E 1 plus twice K phi 1 plus K and therefore, the alpha line that is A f between f and E 1 rotates clockwise through an angle phi 2 on the other hand for corresponding to the alpha line and therefore, one can write that uh, P E 1 which is equal to P f plus twice k phi 2 and the die pressure similarly Q is equal to P f plus twice k phi 1 plus phi 2 plus k. The angle phi 1 and phi 2 in fact uh, and including alpha uh, have relation you know. So, one can see here uh, from figure 26a where alpha can be calculated as phi 2 minus phi 1 and uh, uh, it can be then utilized here. So, when the drying stress that is the uh, sigma x a uh, can now be calculated that is the drying stress required. So, can now be evaluated uh, by just equating the drying force to the, the longitudinal component of the die pressure q and uh, taking both die phase and the unit width uh, and that gives your if you multiply the that is the area. So, that is H A multiplied by uh, sigma X A and that would be equal to 2 Q A B sin alpha and that would be equal to 2 Q in bracket H B minus H A and therefore, uh, sigma X A is equal to twice Q H B minus H A and divided by H A. The reduction R which he explained earlier, uh, you know the reduction is defined as uh, H B minus H A divided by H A. So, because the initially when the drying on the this side uh, the H B height of and the on the other side when it comes back after drying H A. So, this is what is R defined and therefore, one can find out the H A value in terms R in terms of R and that is simply equal to 1 minus R multiplied by H B and the equation therefore, for drying stress can be written as sigma X A equals 2 Q R divided by 1 minus R and this is what we we were interested to find out the drying stress. So, these uh, example shows that we are able to calculate uh, the drying stress and in the previously when we calculate the, the P by 2 K value that is the pressure and uh, this can be used for designing the, the processes. Uh, but please remember that the slip line field theory has a limitation. 
people have tried to extend it for 3D cases, but it has been very tedious and uh, drawing with the, the method explained, it becomes further and uh, once the numerical methods, uh, uh, more accurate numerical methods like upper bound and then later the finite element method appeared, it become better result and faster and for complex situation as including the 3D situation and that is how the slip line method uh, is now today it is not in use, but this was what has been the starting point and uh, when it was easier for people to calculate. And uh, if you refer um, textbook uh, uh, like Johnson and Miller and uh, the other book, the limit, other uh, limit analysis book, uh, the slip line field, uh, Mendelssohn and all those things, you may get many other problems. So, I understand that uh, you can try with some more problems and uh, you can see the applicability of the slip line theory. No doubt, uh, this has been used quite longer time, the slip line field theory, but uh, probably uh, because of the more better methods like upper bound and uh, appeared, FEM appeared, then and that is how. So, uh, in the next, uh, from the next lecture, we would be uh, further discussing the other modeling techniques, uh, the, the slab method we would take up, because that was left last time. Mm. So, and then we will further uh, upper bound method and related issues we will continue. So, but please remember that uh, behind all this discussion, the motive is to give you the basic concept that is the mechanics part of that and wherein for all further when we go for the uh, technological aspect that you will be utilized at step and step at very step of the problems and solving. So, uh, with this uh, motive, uh, uh, please again remember that uh, there are problems, uh, objective pro uh, problems kept for your uh, uh, testing. So, you may try uh, by evaluating yourself with the objective type problems and answering them. So, once again I, I would like to thank you for hearing the lecture very patiently and raising certain queries and questions. So, thank you, thank you once again and uh, with hope to meet you all in further next lecture.